Hi everyone, welcome to this next bit. So in this one, we're going to talk about probability trees. We're going to talk about independent probability trees. Um, so we're going to talk about these first, then we're going to talk about dependent probability trees. So independent can come up in higher and foundation. Um, so if you're doing both tiers, worth looking at. So let's have a little look at this straight away. In the box, there are seven red sweets and three purple sweets. Amanda picks a sweet, notes a colour, replaces it and picks another. So key thing to identify here is because it's being replaced, it means that it is independent. So that second pick that she does is not impacted by what she does on the first pick. So in an exam, you would probably be asked to complete probability trees. So put down the probabilities of each thing occurring. Now, here we're given the values as numbers. And so remembering that probability is written as a fraction at decimal or percentage, we need to fill in what the fractions would be for this probability tree. So looking at it, first of all, there are seven red sweets. Therefore, the probability of red is seven out of however many there are in total. Now, what we know is in this box, there are seven red and three purple. So in total, that makes 10 sweets. Purple is therefore three out of 10. So that's the first thing you need to be aware of. So to find your probability, it's what you're looking for, in this case, seven out of the total number in the bag or box, whatever it might be. OK, so therefore I can write my probabilities on three over 10, three over 10, three over 10 for purple and red would be seven over 10, seven over 10, seven over 10. And again, they don't change on that second branch because the second pick's not affected by the first. OK, so now that we've got all our probabilities in place, we can start to look at the actual question. Now, a question might not necessarily ask you to draw a probability tree, um, but in some instances it will give you one and then you need to fill in the probabilities. OK, so just remembering that probability is a fraction decimal percentage. Don't just put whole numbers down. OK, so it says here the next part of the question is find the probability of Amanda getting two red sweets. So that's what I'm looking at. So I'm looking here. This is my first pick. And then I have to follow that path to get that one as my second pick okay now what i want you to imagine is imagine if you put a dotted line halfway across if i go this route first i can't go down now into this bottom part so if i pick red here i've either got to choose red or purple if i pick purple here then i've got to pick red or purple afterwards you can't go down there and then suddenly jump up here okay which i've seen quite a few times uh, throughout teaching this topic so this is my first pick. My first pick here is red, and then my second pick will be red. So this is the path that I will be following. So it's quite good just to circle the path. And we can call that uh, a route if you want to. OK, so this is my first route. This is the route I'm going to follow to get red, red. Now, there are no other possible ways I could get two red sweets, OK? Because if I was to go here, I'd get red and then purple. That's not two red sweets. If I was to go purple, then I'd have to go red or purple, purple. So two red sweets, that is the only path. Now, what you need to remember is when you are following a path, so if you follow a path or a route, you multiply the fractions. OK, so in this case, the two fractions that I need to multiply are 7 over 10 times by 7 over 10. And if you're not sure on how you multiply fractions, you might be worth you going back and watching the video I've done on that. You just times the top by the top. So 7 times 7 is 49. Bottom times bottom, 10 times 10, which is 100. So the probability of a man getting two red sweets is 49 over 100. If you wanted to, you could write that as 49%, because 49 over 100 is 49%. Or you could say 0 0.49. Any of those answers would be an acceptable answer. So that's that second part. So we've done part one, we've, uh, part A, we've done part B. Now let's look at part C. So I'm just going to uh, rub that out just so it's a little bit clearer for when we use this now. It says find the probability of Amanda getting two suites of different colours. So now we've got a slightly different route we're going to need to pay, take. So two suites of different colours, which means the different colours I could go red first. Then I would have to go purple. So that would be my first route. So I can go red. And if I go red, then I have to go purple. That's my first route. That's route one. But then my second route, there is also a second route here. I could go purple and then red. Now, remember, I can't cross over that dotted line. So they are my two routes. So route one is red, then purple. Route two is purple 
then red. So looking at the root one again, that's seven over 10 for red. So root one's this one, seven over 10. Then I'm going three over 10. And again, if you're following a root, you have to multiply them. So that then becomes 21 over 100. Remember you do top times top, bottom times top, bottom. And the other one is exactly the same, three over 10, but this time, it is just the other way around, right? So it's three over 10 times seven over 10 instead of seven over 10 times three over 10. And that will obviously give us 21 over 100 as well. So we've got two roots. So that's root two. So this is another key point that's worth writing down. If you have two roots, which we do in this case, add the probabilities at the end. So add the answers you can put. Now, what I mean by add the answers is this and this is what you then need to add together. So I'm going to say 21 over 100 is my root 1 plus 21 over 100, which is my root 2. Add those together and I'll end up with 42 over 100. Remember, when you're adding fractions, as long as the bottoms are the same, you just add the tops, keep the denominators the same. Again, if you're not sure on working with fractions, if you're not sure how to add fractions, go back and watch a video I've done on that. I'll put a link to that in there for you as well. Okay, so that's your basics of um, probability trees. What you can now do is I've got a um, question here for you. It says, Billy plays rugby and football each weekend. The probability of Billy winning a game of rugby is 0 0.6. The probability he will draw is 0 0.05. He also plays football. The probability of him winning football is 0 0.3 and drawing is 0 0.5. Assuming both events are independent, so that means they don't affect each other, work out the probability he wins at least one game. So if you want to, you can pause the video and have a go at this one. Fill in that probability tree I've drawn for you there straight away. So you could copy that down and then fill in the probabilities. And then I will go through it to see how you get on. OK, so let's have a little look at this. Then. So the first bit we're talking about is rugby. So just because now this is about two separate events, basically what I'm saying is this first um, branch here is about rugby and this second branch is about football. Now, this one's a little bit harder because technically we've got three possible outcomes. I can win, I can draw, but I could also lose. So if I win the rugby game, the football game, I could win, draw or lose. If I draw the rugby game, I could win, draw or lose a football game. If I lose the rugby game, I could win, draw or lose the football game. So these are all my possible outcomes. So let's start filling in the probability. So I know here winning game of rugby is 0 0.6. So winning rugby is 0 0.6. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see that a bit better. So winning rugby is 0 0.6. The probability draws is 0 0.05. OK, now what we need to think about is the fact that this has to make 100. It has to make a whole. So if I've got 0 0.6 and I've got 0 0.05, I've actually got 0 0.65, OK, 65%. So then what you need to think about is how do I get from 65% to 100%? And your answer should be add on 35%, which is 0 0.35. <laughs> so the probability that I lose rugby is therefore 0 0.35. OK, now let's look at the football probabilities. OK, so he also plays football. The probability of him winning football is 0 0.3. So football win is 0 0.3, which means that can go into all of those parts. Probability I draw is a lot higher this time. That's now 0 0.5. Notice the difference. That's 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So that's 5%. That's 50%. OK, really important that you don't get confused with those two. So I've got win is 0 0.3, a draw is 0 0.5. Therefore, again, thinking about what we just said, it has to add up to 1. So if I've got 0 0.5 and 0 0.3, that makes 0 0.8. So that at the moment is 0 0.8. How do I go from 0 0.8 to 1? 0 0.2. So these are my probabilities. OK. Now what we need to do, so you'd pick up a mark in an exam for your probability tree for at least at least one for filling that in correctly. Assuming both events are independent, work out the probability he wins at least one game. Now, what I mean by at least one game means I could win rugby and then win football. That is still me winning at least one game. So let's just write down our possible, let's write down our possible combinations. So 
winning at least one game. I could win the rugby game and then I could win the football game. That's that first route. I could win the rugby game, but then I could draw. That's still me winning at least one game. So I could go win, draw. So that's route two. I could then win the rugby game and lose the football game. So win, then lose. So they are three possible routes that I could have to win at least one game. You can see there, that's winning at least one game. That's winning at least one game. That's winning at least one game. So they are my three possible routes there. So effectively, I've got that route there. I've got the draw and I've got the win and the loss. Okay, let's look at the next ones. So I'll do this one in a different colour. I could draw the first game of rugby. Now, if I draw rugby, I have to go that route there. I have to then win football because if I go draw, draw, well, I haven't won one game. And if I go draw loss, then I haven't won one game. So that route there is the only route I can take on that middle branch. That doesn't count. That one doesn't count. And then the last branch, let's have a look, look at it. If I lose the first game, winning at least once, it means I would have to then go loss on rugby and win on football. If I went loss, then draw, that's not winning one game. Loss and loss, not winning one game. So technically now I've got one, two, three, four, five routes. One, two, three, four, five. Let's fill in my probabilities. So I know that the win here is 0 0.6. So I'm now going back to this route. So win 0 0.6, win 0 0.3. Then I'm going win again, 0 0.6. And draw, 0 0.5. Win, 0 0.6 and loss 0 0.2. So they are all my probabilities for that first option. Remember, if you're following a path, you would then multiply those together. So you're doing 0 0.6 times 0 0.3. Really easy to make a silly mistake here and think that that becomes 1.8 or something like that, but it becomes 0 0.18. Six times three is 18, but you need to have two decimal places in it, okay? Next one, 6 times 5 is 30, so that becomes 0 0.30. And then the last one will be 0 0.12. Okay, so they are my possible outcomes um, that I could uh, do. They are my possible answers for the first route. So that's route 1, route 2, and route 3. Now, let's look at this red route. So the red route we've got here is a draw, first of all, which was 0 0.05, and then a win of 0 0.3. Remember, I can't go any other routes, because if I go any other routes, then it means that I wouldn't be winning at least one game. And if you do that, that now becomes 0 0.015. 5 times 3 is 15, but technically there's two decimal places there and one there, so you've got to have three. That's the way of thinking about it. Or if you if you think about it with place values, you're effectively then having to divide by a thousand. Okay. Last one. Let's look at the last part. We're doing 0 0.35 times 0 0.3. So again, multiplying those together. So you're doing 0 0.35 times 0 0.3 and you get an answer of 0 0.105. Okay. So they are my, so that's root... Uh, route four, and that is route five. There are no other possible routes that I could take to then get this question correct, okay? What you now need to do, remember what I said back in the previous question, is if you've got more than one route, we then need to add all these together. So basically what you're saying is 0 0.18 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.015 plus 0 0.105 and you end up with 0 0.72 or 72 percent and that is a probability of him winning at least one game in that weekend out of those two different sports okay so moving on now to the next bit we're looking at which is actually dependent um or you might see this called conditional probability trees as well so in this one Let's just zoom out a bit there so you can see it. So dependent slash conditional probability trees. In this one, what we're looking at now is that whenever you take the first pick, the second pick will be impacted by what has happened on the first pick. So let's just read what we've got here. So it says, Christina has a bag full of balls. There are 12 green balls and 10 blue balls. She picks two balls at the same time. Now, 
key thing to understand here is that when you're picking at the same time, that makes it conditional. OK, so that's your first thing to be aware of. Anytime you're picking something at the same time, it actually makes it a conditional probability tree. So it's like me putting my hand in, picking two at the same time. It will be the same as if I was to pick one, throw it away and then pick another. OK, it's really important you understand that in the first instance. OK, so then let's move on and see what this probability tree would therefore look like based on the fact that this is now a dependent event. Um, OK, so we're looking at this, we've got 12 green and 10 blue balls. So in total, we have 22 balls in total. OK, so our probabilities are going to be over 22 in our first instance there. So blue and green are both out of 22 because we've got 12 green and 10 blue. There are 12 green, so this becomes 12 out of 22 and blue is 10 over 22. So my first branch there, 12 over 22, second branch, 10 over, oh, sorry, second part for blue is 10 over 22. Okay, so now the key thing to understand is, if we go back to this idea of uh, drawing a dotted line along here again, like I did in the previous part, if I am following this path here, I can either go green again, or I can go blue. Remember, I can't go this path and then drop down into this part. So I go green, 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 blue. If I go the bottom first, I pick a blue first, then I pick a green, or then I could pick a blue again. So I can either go blue, green, blue, blue. Now, although I'm picking two at the same time, you need to treat it as if there are two different branches. So this is still pick one, and this is still pick two. Okay, so even if you are told that you're picking at the same time, that's how you get your head around what you're doing. Now, if I pick a green here, there are now no longer 12 green to pick from because I'm holding one of those in my hand effectively if I'm picking at the same time. So there are now only 11 green cubes or um, balls in this bag. So there's 11 green and there's now no longer 22 in there. There is actually 21. So this is what I mean by conditional. This second branch is directly impacted by this first branch. So I've gone green and then green. This drops down one, this drops down one. Now, this second part here, that will still drop down one. So all of these will drop down one. But you need to be careful about what you're then going to be putting as your numerator. If I picked a green here, there are still 10 blue ones in the bag. So that has to stay as 10. If I then go this way, so I pick a blue and then I pick a green. There are still 12 green balls in that bag because I haven't touched a green because I've gone down here. I haven't touched one of these green. So the 10 blue and then here, this 12 becomes out of 21 because remember this drops down one here. If I go the bottom uh, route, there was 10 blue in there. I've just picked a blue one and I'm holding it in my hand. So now that actually becomes 9 over 21. So they are your probabilities. OK. Now, using the information from the previous question we did about following paths and things like that, you could try and pause the video and answer this question if you wanted to, or you can just watch me. So find the probability gets two different colored balls. So let's think about what would be my route one. So two different colors. I would go green, then blue. So that's my first route. Let's change that to green so it's less confusing. So my first route would be green, then blue. So they are two different colours. And my other route I could take would be blue. And then I would have to obviously go green. So they are my two different routes I could take. OK, so that's route two. Let's now circle those routes. So I can go green, then blue. That's route one. And then I could go blue, then green. And that would be my route two. Remember, if you are following a path, you have to multiply your fractions together. So that would be what I'm doing in the first instance. So green is 12 over 22. Blue is 10 over 21. And in the second one, I'm doing 10 over 22 times 12 over 21. OK, so. That's your, they are your two roots. And remembering that when you're following a path, you multiply. So all you need to do, remember when you're multiplying 
um, fractions, you just do top times top, so 12 times 10, which is 120, and then you're doing 22 times by 21, which gives you 462. Okay, doing that here, 120 at the top again, 10 times 12 is 120, and 21 times 22 is 462. So that's my root one, that's my root two. And remembering that if I have two different paths, you then have to add them together. So I'm basically saying 120 over 462 plus 120 over 462, which is equal to 240 over 462. If you wanted to simplify that, okay, because they both divide by two, you could, but you don't have to unless it tells you to put it in a particular format. Okay, so that would be my answer to that. Understanding that is conditional because I'm picking at the same time. So anytime you see a question that says, um, I'm picking at the same time, it does become conditional. So the second branch here will drop down by one with your denominator. And you need to think about your numerator. If you pick one from there, that will drop down one, but that one stays the same. If you pick one from there, that drops down one, but that one stays the same. Okay, so that's your conditional probability tree. Okay, um, the next part of the video, I'm going to move on to looking at how we do probability trees with algebra. A um, little bit more complex, we'd only be on higher. Um, and what we're talking about in these ones is using quadratic um, equations as well to begin to then solve them. Okay, right. So let's move on and look at these questions that involve um, probability with algebra. So here's our question. There are X red marbles in the box. So here we don't know how many red marbles there are at all and seven blue. Uh, there's no other marbles in the box at all. So we know we're only talking about red and blue. Billy picks at random two marbles at the same time. So because I'm picking at the same time, it does become conditional, okay, which is important. Make sure you're happy with that. The probability that both marbles are red is 35 over 77. Find the number of red marbles in the box. Right, so I've got to find this unknown, okay? So because I know there are X red, I can literally call red X, and I know there are seven blue. So there's seven going to be there. Now, what I don't know is the total. Now, to find the total, what I would do is I would do that plus that. Thinking about the previous example that we did, we just added the two lots together um, back, in, back up here. So we added 10 blue and we added 12 green to get a total of 22. So we're going to do the same thing here to get my denominator for my fraction. So what I'm saying is I'm saying 7 plus x. So my denominator can be just x plus 7, and it can be exactly the same down here. So although it's not a proper number, that's how I would work it out. I would do the blue one plus the red one and get my answer. Okay, now I'm picking at the same time. So what I'm, what I'm actually concerned with, I'm actually only concerned with the red root. This is the root I'm concerned with because it's two red, so both marbles are red, 35 over 77. So the main one I actually need to work out is this up here. Now, if I've just picked a red one from here, there are now no longer X red ones. There's one less than that because I've just taken it out. So I can say that that becomes X minus one, okay? And then in the box, there is no longer X plus seven because I've just taken one out. So I can say that that is X plus six, okay? So this is the root I am talking about. This is the root I'm following. And there was X red ones, but now I've lost one. So I just say that's whatever X was, take away one. And it was X plus seven, but now it's X plus six because one's disappeared. Now, if I wanted to fill in the rest of this probability tree, I still could. This blue would still be seven and it would be over X plus six. All your denominators here are going to become X plus six now because there's one less. This would become six over X plus six because I've just taken... If I took a blue from there, there's no longer seven blue, there's six. Now, this one would stay as X because I didn't pick a red one following that path there. OK, so I don't need any of this information for this question. But if you did need it, that's how you would then work all of that out. OK, so I'm following this path. So let's think about what we know. We know that we've got X over X plus seven. If I'm following a path, I multiply them times by X minus one over x plus 6. And I know that when I do that, that equals 35 over 77. Okay, 
So what we're now talking about is we are talking about solving a quadratic fraction. Let's just go step by step and work out what we can work out. When you're multiplying fractions, you multiply top by top. So I'm saying x multiplied by x minus 1. And the bottom is x plus 7 multiplied by x plus 6 equals 35 over 77. OK, now, if you're not 100 percent sure how to solve this, I have done a video on solving algebraic fractions. So it could be worth going back and watching that video. I'll put a link to that in this for you so you can watch that if you're not 100 percent sure. But I'm going to go through the process now. So I multiply out the top. That becomes x squared minus x. And the bottom would become x squared plus 6x plus 7x plus 42. And that equals 35 over 77. OK, so that would be my starting process. From here, in order to solve this, the easiest way to think about this is to cross multiply. So where this is a divide by 77, I take that over and multiply that left hand side by that. And this denominator goes over there and is multiplied by that. Now I'm going to tidy that up. That actually is going to become x squared. 6 plus 7 gives me 13. So that actually becomes x squared plus 13x plus 42. Okay. Now I'll show you what this looks like if I write it out as I just said. So I'm taking the 77 over. So we're saying 77 multiplied by x squared minus x is equal to 35. And I'm multiplying it by all of this because I'm taking all of that over. x squared plus 13x plus 42. If you multiply this out, you end up with 77x squared minus 77x is equal to 35x squared. And then now what you're doing is you're doing 35 times by 13, which ends up giving you 455. So that's plus 455x. And then you're doing 35 times by 42, which gives you 1470. OK. OK, what I've now got is a quadratic equation. And in order to solve this, it must equal zero. I want to end up with a positive x squared. So I'm going to take that this side, that this side, and that this side. They're all going to go over to make it equal zero. So what you're going to end up with is 77x squared minus 77x. Then we say minus 35x squared because that one's coming over minus 455x because that's coming over and then minus 1470 now equals zero so we've now made it equal zero let's now tidy this up a little bit so collect our like terms we're saying 77x squared minus 35x squared so you're basically doing 77 minus 35 which gives you 42x squared then you've got minus 77x minus 455 so that number is going to get further away from zero so minus 532 x and then there's nothing else that can go with that final value there so minus 1470 equals zero okay so now what we've got is we've got a quadratic okay and what we need to make sure is we know how to solve this so if you're not 100 percent sure on how to solve a quadratic it might be worth you watching one of the other videos as well I'll put a link in there for you so you're um you've got that but basically that's quite complicated so i'm going to use a quadratic formula and hopefully you already know it's minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a sometimes what you might end up with here is you might end up with a value that can factorize so add to this value multiply to this value so you could factorize this um, but because this one's a little bit more complex i'm going to use a quadratic formula to solve this so that's your a value that's your b value that's your c value so it's minus b which means i'm doing minus and then it's minus 532 so that's my b value plus i'm going to do my positive value first the square root of b squared, so minus 532 squared, and because it's negative, I'm putting it in brackets, minus 4 times by a, which is 42, times by c, which is minus 1470. All of that is then divided by 2 times by 42. So if you type that into your calculator, 
So I'm just typing it in now um, on my scientific calculator I've got. When I work that out, that gives me an answer of 15. What you're then going to need to do is you're going to need to do that again. So um, we do minus minus 532 minus this time the square root of minus 532 squared minus 4 times 42 times minus 1470. All of that divided by 2 times 42. So you're going to have to do it a second time as well, remember, this time changing it for a negative and keep that value on your calculator, go back to it, change a positive for a negative. And when I do that, that gives me, it's minus 7 over 3, um, minus 7 over 3 or minus 2.3 reoccurring. Okay, now what you need to identify is which one of those values it actually is that you can choose. It has to be this value because you cannot possibly have a negative value, okay? Let's think about why. We're saying we're actually trying to find x. So we're saying x is equal to 15, okay? Because when I go back up here and I and I put 15 in there, it means I'm saying there are 15 red cubes and then there are 15 plus 7 in total, which means it's 15 over 22. If I was to say that it would be 2.3, well, I can't possibly have 0.3 of a cube and I also can't have a negative number of cubes, okay? So that's why my answer would be 15, okay? So the question says, let's just double check, find the number of red marbles in the box, x is 15, and we know x represented that, so therefore the answer would be 15. Sometimes it might say to you, work out the total number of marbles in the box. If it said that, you'd do your 15 plus your seven to get 22. Okay, so that's your um, probability with um, algebra. We've gone through different uh, types of probability trees. So we've done basic ones, we've done conditional ones, and um, then you've done algebra as well with them. Hope you found that useful. It's worth going back over any certain bits you're not sure on. Um, hope it helped you and I'll see you all in the next video.